everyone, my name is Reverend Robert Turner and I am the Senior Pastor of St. John Baptist Church in Columbia, Maryland. It's ironic that on this 4th of July weekend that some are celebrating America becoming a free country. While African Americans are still marching and protesting because we want freedom from police brutality, we want freedom from systemic racism, and we want freedom from injustice in our world. And so we've come like David in the Bible, lifting up our eyes to the hills from whence cometh thy help, because we know that our help cometh from the Lord. Now, I wish we could celebrate this holiday weekend in our church house, but since we still have our social gathering restrictions and since your health is my primary concern, we're going to bring God's house to your house. And so let's get ready to sing, let's get ready to praise, let's get ready to pray, let's get ready to give, and let's get ready to hear a word from the Lord because it's time for worship. Shackles and you set me free. How you made a way out of no way. Turn my dog. 
not missing today You've been my joy in the time of sorrow Hope for my tomorrow Peace in the time of storm Strength when I'm weak and worn I can never repay you love for what you've done for me How you lose my shackles and you set me free How you made a way out of no way Turn my darkness into day You've been my joy in the time of sorrow Hope for my tomorrow Peace in the time of storm Strength when I'm weak and warm You've been Lord, you've been so faithful Even though sometimes I didn't do what you wanted me to do into a beautiful symphony of brotherhood. With this faith, we will be able to work together, to pray together, to struggle together, to go to jail together, to stand up for freedom together, knowing that we will be free one day. This will be the day. This will be the day it all comes. Praise the Lord. It is worship time at St. John Baptist Church. Now, if you are a guest and this is your very first time worshiping with us, I guarantee you're going to have such a great time in the Lord that this will not be your last time. Come on, St. John family. Why don't you go to the comment section and, and give some loving welcome to our guests and to one another. You know, there's a song that says, I said I wasn't going to tell nobody, but I just couldn't keep it to myself. Well, you're going to have such a mighty good time here in the Lord at St. John Baptist Church. You cannot keep it to yourself. So why don't you go to your buttons and, and tag your friends and invite them. Come on, it's worship time over at St. John Baptist Church. And don't forget the folks in your house, those that are upstairs or downstairs on the same level with you. Invite them to come in and worship with you or tell them to stay on their own devices because the more people that are worshiping God, can you imagine what a beautiful opportunity that is to let him know that we love him so much and he is so worthy so come on invite somebody with you to uh, worship with you now also i just want to remind everyone that this is first sunday and we will be celebrating the lord's supper so make sure you get your elements early so that you can participate uh, get bread uh, or a cracker to represent the body of Christ or you can get uh, the juice and uh, or even water to represent uh, the blood of Jesus Christ. Now this is uh, Independence Weekend and we will be commemorating uh, uh, the birth of this country in 1776. Uh, so uh, that's a good thing but let me tell you here's the shout. The shout is we're going to be worshiping God Almighty who is the one who makes all things possible. So come on, we're ready to really have a great time in the Lord. So make sure, tag somebody, invite them, tell them you do not want to miss this. And I'm going to tell you one thing, we sure are glad that you're here. Welcome, welcome, welcome.
Hey, today is the first Sunday of the second half of the year. And even after all we've been through, do you know what that means? It means we have the testimony that we are still here. Wow, God has been faithful to us through all we've gone through. And I'm excited about what the Lord is doing in and through us. Listen, just a few quick announcements for us so you know what's happening in the life of our church. You've seen all over the news and it's apparent that there are social justice issues that are plaguing our lives today. And our social justice ministry at St. John wants to invite you to take part in what we're doing to make change in this world, locally, nationally, and even in the state of Maryland. Join the social justice ministry for more information this Wednesday, July 8th at 6 p.m. There is an invitation available to you. If you are interested, email our ministry administrator, Sister Lisa Copeland at sjbc underscore ministry admin at stjohnbaptistchurch.org. Put it in the subject line, social justice ministry. She's going to send you a Zoom link and we'll see you on the Zoom call for the social justice ministry this Wednesday at 6 p.m. Also on Wednesday at 8 p.m., all of the men of our church are invited to our men's ministry virtual fellowship that is entitled Armored. Men coming together during turbulent time. We've said it, and it is true, that sometimes the difference between winning and losing a battle is what you wear. What are you armored with? And we're going to learn together as men this Wednesday how to put on the armor of God. Every man, you're invited to participate. Learn more information. Go to our church website, stjohnbaptistchurch.org. The link to the virtual fellowship is under the breaking news section. This Saturday, listen, you know it's graduation season. We've been talking about it for the last couple weeks. This Saturday, the 11th, I'm inviting you personally. Yes, you. Please stop by the church at 10 a.m. You get This is what I'm asking you to do. Get in your car, make a cool sign if you desire. Drive by the church, come through the parking lot, drive by our graduates, and let, let's let them know together that as a church, we celebrate their academic endeavors. We have over 15 students who are graduating from high school and going into college, and about 15 students who are in college and continuing through college. Even in a pandemic, we are dispensing over $50,000 dollars in scholarships and we have a reason to celebrate. Listen, please RSVP so that we can be best prepared for you. Uh, if you would text SJBC 2020 to the number 84576 and just let us know you're coming. That's all you have to do and we'll see you this Saturday at 10 a.m. in the church parking lot. Every member is also invited to the St. John Baptist Church mid-year congregation meeting that's going to take place on Saturday, July 18th from 10 o'clock to noon. Check out the website for information. You will receive the link once you register. But listen, you want to be a part of learning and engaging in the vision of this house. God is leading us forward. And as we follow God, we're going to hear from our leadership about the direction that we're going in as a church. Also, you're invited. Save the date. Our virtual self-care workshop is going to happen on Tuesday, July 21st. It's coming right up. And, you know, each Wednesday, we honor the Lord and we gather here on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. for Power Hour. This week's speaker is none other than Deacon Kathleen Cheek. We'll see you right here on Power Hour. Now, I want to pause to celebrate birthdays and anniversaries. If you have a birthday in the month of July as a church, we say happy birthday. Go ahead, drop your birthday in the comment. Give us the date. You can keep the year to yourself, but let us know the date of your birthday and we're going to celebrate your birthday. Also, if you're celebrating the anniversary of a marriage, drop that in the comment section. We want to celebrate with you. Drop the date of your anniversary. Let us know you're celebrating your anniversary in the month of July. And as a church, we celebrate what God is doing in your life. Happy birthday and happy anniversary to you. It's offering time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Offering time. I want you to do something with me right now. Let's tell something. We're going to talk about tithing. What is our, What is it to give 10%? What is it? What is the tithing? I want you to do something with it. I want you to touch, touch the screen with me right now. 
touch the screen with me right now. If you don't want to touch the screen right now, close your eyes and 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 and, and just let's just think about this for a second. Close your eyes. Touch the screen. Tithing isn't something you ought to do or have to do. It's something you get to do. Somebody ought to say amen. When people think about tithing, it can sometimes be with a less than excited attitude that tithing is something you're obligated to do. But I want to encourage my brothers and sisters this morning to encourage you to change your mindset around tithing. Instead, look at it as a way to joyfully acknowledge God's provision over the resources he has asked you to steward. Instead of thinking of tithing as an act of what you have to do, consider tithing as something you joyfully get to do. Somebody ought to say amen. I guarantee this change in mindset, while admittedly not always easy to maintain, it will change your life. Mm. Isn't that important? Isn't that something? It'll change your life. You're a tither. Our church is a tithing church. We give 10% of our of our whole, just the, the whole picture. 10%. I've seen it at work. I've seen it I've seen it in the community. I've seen it in our world. Oh, thank you. Thank God for this opportunity. Stay encouraged and get excited about giving to God because it works. You give, the church gives, and people are blessed. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the love, your, your grace, and your just being the type of God you are. Please accept these gifts, our tithes, and our offering, Father God. Bless those that are in charge of this distribution, Father God. Yes, yes, that it will reach as far as you want it to reach, as high as you want it to reach, as wide as you want it to reach. In the name of Jesus, we, we're excited about doing this, Father God. We thank you for the opportunity of being good stewards of your provisions. We love you and adore you. For it is in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we lift up our tithes and offerings. And let the people of God now say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. There are four ways that you can give. You can mail your uh, offering envelopes and your tithes and offering to the St. John Baptist Church, 9055 Tamar Drive. Watch it come over my shoulder right there. Columbia, Maryland, 21045. Uh, you put on there. Uh, operations manager. She'll make sure it goes where it's supposed to go. Or uh, church administrator. They are, they work in they work in concert. It's a beautiful thing. You also can text to give SJBC give uh, to seven seven nine seven seven. You can go on our SJBC website www St John Baptist Church Saint, www at St John Baptist Church dot org. Yeah, I saw it. I saw it over there. Hit the give button, and then it'll give you all the information that you need. And you can also give to your local banking institution. That's all I got. I'm excited. Can you tell? I love you. Till next time. Be blessed. Wanna praise you forever and ever and ever for all you've done for me. Blessing and glory and honor, you know.
make sure you have your elements handy now as we prepare for our communion, also known as the Lord's Supper. You know, this time is a sacred time and it's all about love. God's awesome love for us, our love for God, and our love for one another. So we're going to begin this time, this sacred time, by saying our church covenant together, which is our commitment that we make to God and to each other. So would you join me in saying this? It will come up on the screen and we will be reading it in unison. Having been led, as we believe, by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we do now in the presence of God, angels in this assembly, most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We engage therefore by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge and holiness, to give it a place in our affections, prayers and services above every organization of human origin, to sustain its worship, ordinances, discipline and doctrine, to contribute cheerfully and regularly as God has prospered us towards its expenses for the support of a faithful and evangelical ministry among us, the relief of the poor and the spread of the gospel throughout the world. In case of a difference of opinion in the church, we will strive to avoid a contentious spirit. And if we cannot unanimously agree, we will cheerfully recognize the right of the majority to govern. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotion, to study diligently the Word of God, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintance, to walk circumspectly in the world, to be kind and just to those in our employ and faithful in the service we promise others, endeavoring in the purity of heart and goodwill towards all men to exemplify and commend our holy faith. We further engage to watch over, to pray for, to exhort and stir up each other unto every good word and work, to guard each other's reputation, not needlessly exposing the infirmities of others, to participate in each other's joys and with tender sympathy bear one another's burdens and sorrows, to cultivate Christian courtesy, to be slow to give or take offense, but always ready for reconciliation, being mindful of the rules of the Savior in the 18th chapter of Matthew, to secure it without delay and through life amid evil report and good report, to seek to live to the glory of God who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. When we remove from this place, we engage as soon as possible to unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word. Amen, amen, amen. You know, every time we participate in the Lord's Supper, we are commemorating the greatest gift that we have ever, ever received in our lives, and that is to be free from the bondage of sin. And the only person that could have done that was Jesus Christ. Let us pray now over our elements. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask a blessing on these elements that we partake of. We ask that you touch them as only you can, dear Heavenly Father. And as you touch them, they be transformed to represent your body and your precious blood. And as we partake of them, Lord, I pray that we too will be transformed so that we will be more loving like Jesus. And Lord, we will have the desire to always to live according to your good and perfect will. This prayer we pray in Jesus' name. And all who love the Lord said, Amen, Amen, Amen. Praise God. Now, if you would take your element, your bread or your cracker that represents the, the body of Jesus Christ, because on that never to be forgotten night, Jesus took the bread, he took it before his disciples, he blessed it, and he gave it to each and every one of them saying, take ye, eat ye all of it. Amen. That same night, he took the cup and he blessed it and he gave it to each of his disciples and he said, take ye, drink ye this and as you drink it, remember, this represents 
my precious blood that I shed for your salvation. Amen. Now we can all say, because of what Jesus has done for each and every one of us on that cross 2,000 years ago, giving us the victory, we can all say, it is well with my soul. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It is preaching time at St. John Baptist Church. You know, in the book of Romans chapter 10, there's a verse that says, all who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And then there are a series of questions that, are, that are queried or are asked like, well, well, how can you call on the Lord if you don't know to believe in him? And, and, and how can you believe in him if you've never heard him? And, and how can you hear him if there's never been someone to preach about him? And, and how can you hear a preacher if a preacher has not been sent? Well, let me tell you, the pastor of St. John Baptist Church, yeah, the pastor right here, Reverend Dr. Robert Turner, you see, he is a powerful preacher. He's a powerful preacher who has been sent. He's appointed and he is anointed to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I guarantee you are going to have a great time in the Lord. Now remember this, you see, preaching time is not a spectator time. So we're not to sit back and ask him to just to feed us. Because you see, it's participatory. And the more you participate, the more your spirit will be filled up. So hallelujahs and amens and praise the Lord. You see, you'll be so filled that you know, you just going to have to tell somebody. But don't wait until after the sermon is over. Why don't you reach out now and touch some of your friends. Tag them and say, come on, it's preaching time at St. John Baptist Church. Come on, Reverend Turner. Preach the word. Preach the word. Preach the word. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus was the best thing God ever, ever done.
Today, our youth pastor and, and I are going to be starting a new summer sermon series for the month of July entitled, Surviving a Strange Season. I'm gonna be preaching on first and third Sundays and our youth pastor, Reverend Ricky Harvey Jr., he'll be preaching on the second and fourth Sundays. And so, uh, spread the word about our new summer sermon series. Now, our scripture for today can be found in the New Testament book of John, the eighth chapter, and we're going to be reading verses 31 through 36. Hear these words from the word of God. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, we are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? Jesus replied, verily, verily, I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family but a son belongs to it forever. For if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, and the applying of this his holy and most righteous word. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Our Father and our God, if you will, we ask that you might let the very words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts to be acceptable in thy sight. For you are our strength and you are our redeemer. Let all the people of the Lord say amen. For a few moments today, we just want to hang these words on the hinges of your mind what happens when Jesus sets you free? What happens when Jesus sets you free? Church, in John chapter 8, Jesus was talking to some Jews who thought they were free when actually they were not. Because during the conversation, uh, they told Jesus that they've never been in bondage to anybody because they were the descendants of Abraham. Uh, but church, while these Jews were uh, people who thought they were free, actually they weren't because they were under an illusion of freedom. They, they acted like they were free and they perhaps looked like they were free, but God knows they weren't free. And the reason we know they weren't free is because at that very moment when they spoke these words, Israel was being occupied by the Roman government. And then Jesus, he decided that he was going to dismantle their freedom declaration even more when he said, whoever Commit sin is a slave of sin. And, and that means that anybody who's not saved from sin is in bondage to sin. And so here in our text, church, uh, this is a classic example of people who think they have freedom when actually they don't. And then, church, history also teaches us that it's possible to think that you don't have freedom when actually you do. Because on January 1st, 1863, the Emancipation Proclamation was signed by President Abraham Lincoln. And at midnight that day, all the slaves in America became free. <clears throat> but the only problem was that 
that there was a certain group of slaves in the state of Texas who didn't get the message about their freedom until two and a half years later. The church, the slaves in America were free on January 1st, 1863, but the slaves in the state of Texas didn't learn they were free until June 19th, 1865, which means that elected officials across the state of Texas kept the news that all slaves in America were free from the slaves in Texas for two and a half years. And so the slaves in Texas didn't think that they had freedom when actually they did. And so on this 4th of July weekend, <clears throat> on this holiday weekend, it reminds me of June 19th because Juneteenth is like Independence Day for African Americans in America because this in the, is the day when black folk in America became free. And church, our Independence Day, our Independence Day is a bittersweet day because celebrating the end of slavery makes us first ask the question why they ever had to be slavery in the first place, church. June, Juneteenth is our Independence Day and it's, it's a bittersweet day for black folk in America because for two and a half years, our ancestors thought that they didn't have their freedom when actually they did. And so this passage, John chapter eight, it teaches us that you can think that you're free when actually you aren't. And then history teaches us that you can think that you aren't free when actually you are. And then church, this, this passage from John chapter eight and the message from Juneteenth teaches us that even if you have legal freedom and even if you have political freedom and even if you have social freedom, you may be free, but you're still not fully free until you get freedom, until you get deliverance, and until you get salvation from the Lord. Because protests can give you political freedom. And changes in policies can give you practical freedom. And, and changes in the law can give you legal freedom. And then winning the lottery can give you financial freedom. But only Jesus can make you fully free. Now, now watch the text. Watch the text. Because the first thing that, that our text teaches us is that the truth about Jesus will make you free. The truth about Jesus will make you free. Now, now, church, all truth doesn't make you free because there's some people in this world who use the truth to bind folk. They use the truth to belittle folk. They use the truth to demean folk. They use the truth to make folk feel bad about themselves. But, but this truth that Jesus has may hurt you when it initially hits you, but it's designed to heal you. And that's why the truth about Jesus will make you free. But watch, church, watch. Watch what it'll make you free from. Church, it'll make you free from bondage. Now, in our text, in our text, when Jesus told these Pharisees, that, that the truth would make them free. The first thing they said was that, that, that we are descendants of Abraham and we've never been bound to anybody. We, we've never been in bondage to anybody. But church, the mere fact that the Jews had been slaves in Egypt for 400 years lets us know that they were blind to their bondage. And just like the Pharisees in our text, there are many people in this world today who are bound on many levels, but they are blind to their bondage. They've got chains all over their mind. They've got chains all over their existence. They've got chains all over their lives, and they don't acknowledge that they're bound. But church, 
If you are free and if you are set free by the truth about Jesus, it'll set you free from your fears. It'll set you free from disobedience. It'll set you free from ignorance. It'll set you free from deception. It'll set you free from whatever has got you bound. Somebody ought to give God some praise today because you don't have to be blind to the fact that you are bound. Now, 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 church, there, there, there are a couple of kinds of bondage in our lives. First, there's the bondage of being. There's the bondage of, of being. And that's when your condition circumscribes your possibilities. That's when your social conditions and your political conditions and your economic conditions draw circles and lines around you so that you can never go beyond a certain place in your life. And so, and so there's the bondage of being. But many of us, we're not suffering from the bondage of being. Many of us are suffering from the bondage of believing. Because if your belief is not free, then and no matter what your state of being is, you can never rise above where you've been or where you are. But church, I'm so glad that when the Lord sets you free, you may not be free from a state of being, but you can be free from a state of believing. And church, when your mind is set free and when your belief is set free, it doesn't matter what's going on around you. It doesn't matter what's happening to you. And it doesn't matter if the odds are stacked against you. You'll have enough faith to believe that I've got a feeling that everything is going to be all right. Somebody ought to give God some praise today because the truth about Jesus will set you free. And then church, when when Jesus sets you free, here's the real shot. When Jesus sets you free, you are totally free. When Jesus sets you free, you are totally free. Now, many of us, many of us are free in certain areas in our lives. Many of us are free in, with, with certain aspects of our life. But, but when Jesus sets you free, you become totally free. In other words, church, you, you become totally free in all the aspects of your life. That's why the songwriter said a long time ago, shackled by a heavy burden, neath a load of guilt and shame. Then the hand of Jesus touched me, and now I am no longer the same. Why? Because he touched me. Oh, he touched me and all the joy that floods my soul. Something happened. I don't know what it was, but, but something happened. I can't explain it, but, but something happened. I, I can't comprehend it, but, but something happened. I, I can't even describe it, but, but something happened. And now I know that he touched me and he made me whole. Is there anybody here that's glad that when Jesus touches you, he can totally bless you? Because when he touches you, he, he can bless your mind so you think right. He can bless your tongue so you talk right. He can bless your eyes so you look right. He can bless your hands so you work right. He can bless your body so that you feel right. He can bless your heart so you can love right. He can bless your legs so you stand right. He can bless your feet so you walk right. And he can bless your life so you can live right right. Would you shake somebody's hand real quick and tell your neighbor, neighbor, when Jesus sets you free, you're not just partially free and you're not almost free, but you're totally free because when Jesus sets you free, he can set you free from loneliness because he promised never to leave you. 
never to leave you alone. When Jesus sets you free, you can be free from sin because the Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed on him should not perish but shall have everlasting life. When Jesus sets you free, you can be free from indecision because the Bible says that if you trust in the Lord with all of your heart and if you lean not to your own understanding, if in all your ways you acknowledge him, he will, he will, he will direct your path. When Jesus sets you free, you can be free from fear. Because the Bible says that the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the Lord sets you free, he can set you free from impatience. Because the Bible says that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and shall not faint. Is there anybody here who can testify that when Jesus sets you free, you can be free from inadequacy? Because the Bible says that my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. Somebody ought to give God some praise today because when the Lord sets you free, you're totally free because he can do exceedingly abundantly above all you could ask or think of. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? If you believe it, say yeah. If you know it, say yeah. If you're glad about it, then let's give God the glory and let's give God the honor and let's give God the praise and say hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor. Hallelujah. And thank you for that great word. This is a part of our service where we can increase our family. Those who may not know him for the pardoning of their sins. I want to ask you a couple of questions. Now, what do you think? So you'll know we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. He sent his only son to satisfy the judgment but those who believe in him. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ lived a, he lived a sinless life, but he loved us so much that he died for our sins, yours and mine. He, diso- he loved us so much that he took the punishment for us that we deserve. He was buried and he rose from the dead, according to the Bible. If you truly believe, my brothers and sisters, in your heart receiving the lord jesus christ as your savior declaring jesus is lord in your life there's not a better decision that you can make so i'm asking you right now if you believe that he died for your sins and you want him to be savior and lord of your life touch the screen with me right now touch the screen with me right now And repeat these words. Dear Lord Jesus. I know that I'm a sinner. And I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins. And rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart. And to come into my life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. Amen. Man, if you said that, if you believed that in your heart and said those words, oh, all I got to do is tell you, that's the decision that you will never forget. You are now saved and you will have eternal life 
with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you for making that decision. And I invite you, I invite you, if you don't have a church home, I invite you to contact the church at 410-992-6977 and tell them I claim him. I am saved. And they will get you a, a phone number. They will get your phone number rather and have somebody call you and talk to you about St. John Baptist Church. Right now, it's not about the church. It's about your salvation. We'll talk about the church when they give you your phone call if you're looking for a church home. St. John is a wonderful church home. But right now, watch this. Look at your screen. Look at your screen right now. There's hand clapping. There's hallelujah. There's yelling. There's this, I love you. Welcome to the family. You see it. It's right there. I see it right now. Welcome to the family. You are saved. It's prayer time now, and you're invited to go ahead. Any prayer requests you have to share with us and our prayer ministry, would you drop it in the comment section at this time? And we're going to go before the Lord, having been encouraged by the message and the worship of this day. Let's pray together. God in heaven, we thank you for who you are. As your sons and daughters, thank you for being a good father to us. Thank you for sharing your light and your love in our lives. We thank you that you have not left us to our own defenses, but you, O oh Lord, are a shield for us. You're our glory and the lifter of our heads. We thank you today that you're breaking the shackles of bondage, that it is so true, we heard the word today, that whom the Son has made free is free indeed. We praise you today, Lord for the strength and the power that you bring into our lives. Thank you. We're not in this thing by ourselves in spite of the struggles and the strains of this season. Thank you, Lord, that you are here with us. You Emmanuel, God with us, with us in the struggles, with us in our trouble, with us in our pains. We, we lift to you now our local and even regional and national communities, Lord, that you would just Show us that you're mighty and strong. Prove to us you're still the God of the Bible, that you can do anything but fail. We ask, Lord, that you have your way. Heal the sick. Interject your power through the COVID-19 pandemic. Prove to us that you desire to see a world that proves that we're all made in your image, that no race or gender or sort of person is better than another. But we thank you for freedom today, freedom in our minds, freedom in our finances, freedom in our homes, freedom in our souls, spiritual freedom. God, I thank you today that you have given us freedom. Thank you. We claim it that we are now free indeed. Bless every worshiper who's tuned into this life today, Lord, that you would show us that you're worthy of our attention and our affection. And we praise you and bless you. We, bless, we pray for the leadership of this church. Lord, that you would guide us and lead us for every home connected to our church. Pour out your spirit on us in a fresh and new way. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. The old folks used to say, when all God's children get together, what a time, what a time, what a time. And we certainly had a mighty good time today reflecting and celebrating and contemplating and projecting and anticipating what the Lord is going to do in our lives and in this country. Because if there was ever a time when we need the Lord, we need him now. And so church, let me leave you with some parting words on this 4th of July weekend. When you think of freedom, uh, don't focus on your right to do as you please, but focus on your opportunity to do what's right. God bless you. Have a great week, stay safe, and see you next Sunday.